sum it up in two words. Damn right. Senator, good to have you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for having me on. What do you make of this judge's ruling? Surprise? Well, we're deeply disappointed uh, that uh, she views that uh, the enforcement of law would impose a burden on the federal government, and the federal government is supposed to carry out its responsibilities of securing our borders. Uh, it's it's uh, really uh, deeply disappointing, and as you said, I'm sure that there will be appeals for a long time. I hope that it could go sooner rather than later, although, as you know, this is a stay, and stays are appealed, etc. But the fact is that we're deeply disappointed, and it clearly is... Uh, uh, is something that will be disappointing the citizens of my state who view it as a national security issue. You know, it's interesting, Senator, but uh, she went beyond what some legal scholars say was, was the intent and, and the issue here over constitutionality of the state versus federal uh, rights. She said, and I quote here, there is a substantial likelihood that officers will wrongfully arrest legal resident aliens under the new law. So again, she went beyond whether this was a state versus federal issue to touching on a potential racial one. What do you make of it? Well, two points. One is that it is federal law that anyone who is not a citizen and in this country legally is required to carry identification with them at all times. Second of all, the Arizona law explicitly states there has to be reasonable suspicion to stop someone and then reasonable suspicion that there's a question about that individual's uh, immigration status. So. I, I, I do not understand the logic of her thinking in that, in the words that you just described. Um, is it your view that, that this does go all the way to the Supreme Court? It, it, it seems like it's heading in that direction. What do you think? Well, given the history of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, I kind of think we're going all the way to the Supreme Court. But as you know, it's a bit complicated because she has just issued a stay of parts of the law, as you know, rather than a final ruling. But the law then, does it go into effect at midnight, albeit very limited, uh, its teeth removed, its enforcement provisions removed, or is it just nixed entirely? Well, I think key provisions have been removed. Let's, let's be honest about it, because part of it was, a major part of it was that some, if, if there is reasonable suspicion, that someone can is can be stopped and then if there's reasonable suspicion they can be asked about their immigration status but the also the upshot of this uh, Neil is we got to get the border secure John Kyle and I have a 10-point plan we can secure the border there are parts of the border that are largely secure and uh, rather than wasting their time on all of this court stuff all they had to do was give the give us the assets necessary to get our border secure um, I wanted to get your reaction while I have you here, Senator. Uh, Vincente Fox, the former president of Mexico, in, in a q and I believe with Time Magazine, I think I'm right about that. He uh, said he was disappointed in you in particular, sir. Referring to you, say, he said when he campaigned for president, he tried to gain votes from Hispanics by positioning himself very positively around Migration, immigration, more to the point. I don't understand his position today. It's very selfish. It's a incredible politician of his stature, of his matureness and age, to be such a traitor to his own ideas. What do you think of that? Well, thanks, Vicente, for bringing up my age. Uh, <laughs> fact, oh, by the way, that was the New York is, Times. I misspoke. But go ahead. <laughs> the fact is uh, that, that I campaigned in 2008 for the presidency, making very clear that we had to secure the borders first. I wish Vicente uh, had paid closer attention. President Fox had paid closer attention. Second thing, I'm deeply disappointed in President Fox because when he came to power, he said that he was going to change the economy of Mexico and improve it and make changes in the cartels that control a lot of their economy, a lot of their laws that force people into lack of opportunity, which then makes them want to come to the United States. So I've been disappointed in the promise of his election, which was the first time, as you know, that the ruling uh, party had been in power for so many years. So That's right. my disappointment in him is very deep as well. I'd ignore the age thing, Senator, if I were you. I know he'd. <laughs> Thanks, um, But, Senator, while I have you here, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, these WikiLeaks, 90,000 strong of them, yeah. on, on Afghanistan and whether this is a modern-day version of the Pentagon Papers and will turn people off to this war. What, what do you think? Well, I think, uh, as 
General Mattis says it's not a lot of new information. We knew that things were not going well, and that's why we need a new strategy and a new search. But what I'm deeply concerned about is that in these uh, revelations, there is uh, identification of Afghans who have cooperated with us and are helping us, and uh, this could literally put their lives in danger. And that, to me, is totally unacceptable. Second aspect of it is the larger issue. We've got to talk about cybersecurity. You know, if we had a private first class who was able to have access to all kinds of sensitive and secret information, it used to be they were on paper, it was need to know basis. Now we've got to really look at the issue of uh, the security of classified material. All right, Senator John McCain, thank you. Very good seeing you again. Nice to be with you again. Uh, by the way, fair and balanced, and we 